Nicole. Hi, Angelia. How you been? Girl, I've been good. What about you? Girl, everything's been going good. What's new with you? Honey, out here trying to be my own boss and I'm making these money moves. You know, I've been trying to stay fit and work on my health and my wellness. All right, now. What about the issues us women are facing today and the struggle with these relationships? Oh, my gosh. Girl, that's just too heavy. Let's go hit up the hot spots and have things. Girl, let's, let's talk. talk. And Nicole. Our guest today is Terry Bentley. Come on out. Come on, Terry. Yes, Ooh. welcome, Terry. Ooh. So glad to be here. Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much. We appreciate oh, it. Thank, thank you. So yes. glad to thank, be you. Here. thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We're excited. Thank you so much, Terry, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Welcome to the show. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you all for having yes. me. Yes, yes, we're excited. So we're going to talk about today suicide and depression and how to rise to the top in the midst of the fall. So Terry, tell us about your story. Yeah, I really like that. How to rise ab uh, above, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my story. It mm -hmm. is. It's my message. My message is we've got to destigmatize the issue of mental health. Mm. And so people can feel comfortable getting and reaching out and getting the help that they need. Okay. And right now, people are stuck in a um, cycle of shame mm -hmm. and um, a fa the fact that they are afraid to reach out for help is the number one reason why we are le losing people to depression. That's mm -hmm. why people are taking their life mm -hmm. because number one, they are not getting treated mm -hmm. and number two, they're afraid to get treated. And mm -hmm. there's a misperception in our, our culture regarding mental illness and substance abuse. So yeah. that's where my story st starts, okay? okay? okay. Um, I'm a criminal defense attorney, but I was a news reporter to start with. Okay. And uh, my first degree, uh, w my degree was out of the University of Texas. Okay. Okay. And so I went to the University of Texas and that's where it all started. I did not grow up in a home where there was alcohol use. My parents didn't drink, so I, I wasn't familiar with social drinking. Right. I went to the University of Texas, everybody drank. Partying. Including me, mm -hmm. drank, and then most people drank to get drunk. So that was my experience. Mm -hmm. Well, when I moved to Amarillo, which is where my mm -hmm. first job with the CBS affiliate was in Amarillo, I covered the courthouse and the police department. And I was fascinated watching, covering trials and covering the crime beat. That was something I, I was fascinated with. I'm an adrenaline junkie, it made my heart race. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was all very exciting. Mm -hmm. I ended up falling in love with the elected district attorney. Okay. And we got married, and when, but when we got married, what I didn't realize is that he was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Because when we would go out, and we would go to dinner or whatever, and he drank and he got drunk, that's what I was used to, hmm. because I had experienced that at the University of Texas. Okay. So what I didn't know at the time is that the alcoholism or drug abuse mm -hmm. is a progressive disease and unless you do unless you intervene unless you get help mm -hmm. unless you get treatment it's only going to get worse problem that we had my husband and i had is that since he was a public official we and i'm going to say we mm -hmm. because alcoholism drug abuse it becomes a family disease mm -hmm. even though i'm wasn't the one who had a problem with alcohol, I had a problem with alcohol Absolutely. because I was responding yeah. and reacting to my husband who was an alcoholic and I didn't understand mm -hmm. any of that. Mm -hmm. Because of his position, we were afraid that if we mm -hmm. reached out for help, if we went to a mm -hmm. therapist, if mm -hmm. we went to 12-step groups, it might affect his career. Mm -hmm. So we were trapped this disease keeps you trapped in a closet of isolation and mm -hmm. silence and shame. Mm -hmm. So we were married for 11 and a half years and about halfway through our marriage, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't convince him to stop drinking. I couldn't convince him to 
to act in a more appropriate manner. I, I, none of this made any sense to mm -hmm. me, mainly because I didn't understand alcoholism. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what to call it. Right. Okay. I just knew that he, he acted inappropriately. Right. And right. if you love me, you would stop this nonsense. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what happened over the, over the time, over the years, is my self-esteem started to tank because mm -hmm. there was nothing I could say mm -hmm. to change his behavior. There was no, I couldn't love him enough. I mm -hmm. couldn't yell enough. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, it was all that dysfunctional mm -hmm. behavior mm -hmm. that I was experiencing and that I could not do anything about the situation we were in. I would pray God just, please, please. Rescue me, help me something. Rescue me, help yeah. me, yeah. Keep, mm -hmm. keep him from drinking. Yeah. Because if he, my mind was, if he just stopped drinking, every, everything, everything would be, would be okay, fine. Right? Yes, fine. you would think it would totally okay. fine. When did you decide enough was enough? Well, that's a, a, a great question mm -hmm. because what happens, it, the disease is very slow and it progresses mm -hmm. very slowly. So your normal, your new normal mm -hmm. of dysfunction slowly mm. rises. If you think about it, if this, if the dysfunction had occurred overnight, I would have said, I'm not, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But because it's so it's slow, mm -hmm. I became, that became my new normal. You adapted okay. to the situation. You do. Mm -hmm. And that is very, that's, that's with okay. anything across the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But about halfway, about the middle of our marriage, I finally said, and we, we had five, four little girls in five years. So boom, boom, wow. boom, a lot going on. Yeah. Putting him out, huh? yeah. loving him for real. <laughs> that's, and I did love this man. Yes. Yes. Ooh, I loved him. Yeah. And that's why mm -hmm. I thought, oh, just stop this because yes. we will, it, you know, we'll live happily ever after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half, halfway um, into our marriage, I finally said, I don't know what's, I don't know what this is. I've got to do something about this. I'm going to have to go for help. And he stopped me dead in my tracks because he said, if you go get help, you will ruin me. He'll lose everything. Peep, I will, yes. will, and because the nature of the disease is such that we were so enmeshed, I didn't know where he stopped and I started. Mm. The way I was so, and I, I don't like the word codependent so much because it's overused, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I was so codependent. I was dependent on his feelings and his behavior. And according, I, I, I completely changed the way I felt or reacted mm -hmm. depending on how he, he was, was acting. Mm -hmm. And so if he'd wake up in the morning, I'd say, well, how are we doing basically? Because if he was okay. You're okay. You're I was okay. okay. He determined how your wow. day was going to go. Wow. That's exactly how right. your life was going to exist. Exactly right. Well, needless to say, as I, uh, things got worse, um, it was affecting his job. It was affecting our marriage. He w had, uh, he had a couple of scrapes with the law, mm -hmm. uh, driving drunk. Okay. And here he is, the elected district attorney. That is not cool, no, no. as you can imagine. So um, I became frightened that something was going to happen mm -hmm. with our little girls and that, that I, I was going to finally have to make a decision. And I, I just remember standing in my bathroom going, please God help me. I mean, mm. I was raised in the church. Yeah. I know all about yeah. Jesus. I knew, but I didn't know Jesus until I finally said, help me. Mm. I've got to have. You surrendered. I, I, sur I yeah. totally, surrendered. that's exactly yeah. what I did. Mm -hmm. I totally surrendered yeah. and I said, you've got to help me. Yeah. Well, what that looked like for me was we separated for eight months okay. because we, I thought I got to protect my daughters. I've got to get myself mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we separated, I started getting the help I needed. Okay. It, it it came to a head finally about eight months later, and he he made a terrible decision. So is this where your life changed? This is where my life okay. changed. Now, he, uh, I want to back up before I, I, I go into this life changing event because one of the things that I also noticed about Danny was that he was not only an alcoholic, but he also suffered from depression. Mm, okay. His out in disappointing situations was, I'll just kill myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, my brain didn't wrap around that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm like, what? Yeah. Why? Why? Because you didn't get the outcome in a trial, you might as well just kill yourself. Made no sense right, to me. Okay. Right. But he was saying this stuff. But then again, I wasn't seeing a counselor. I had no idea the serious na nature of, of that. Mm -hmm. So 
as of course everybody's gonna put two and two together mm -hmm. after 11 and a half years after everything started falling to pieces after his life was circling the drain mm -hmm. um, someone had filed a removal suit one night uh, Palm Sunday mm -hmm. 23 years ago mm -hmm. Palm Sunday 23 years ago April the 9th he walked into our bedroom and took his life Jesus oh, right there our, I had just put Jesus our girls Christ. down 10 minutes before he walked in that night mm. and took his life in our bedroom and um, my life when he when he pulled that trigger it, part of me died Ooh, with him I can imagine you were you were where yeah. were you I mean I'm standing sorry. there and yeah standing right just right yeah he was in our, uh, my bedroom and I was standing right outside the door I had a, we had some doors that came from the backyard into the bedroom mm -hmm. and I was standing right because I w was terrified mm -hmm. I didn't know what he was going to do I had a feeling because things had been yeah. ramping up yeah but so I was standing there when he so took his life so when he took his life did you see him uh, get the gun and well were you afraid he was going to shoot you and the kids or did you really think he was going to kill himself that's a good question but now in retrospect as I look at, look at this I'm not sure because what he did I had changed the locks mm -hmm. to our house that weekend mm. and uh, when the locksmith uh, I had left town because it, the, the situation was becoming very um, scary mm -hmm. so okay. I had left with the girls and, came, and, and we came to mm -hmm. Dallas and I was having the, the locks changed and he drove into the driveway and the locksmith, because everybody knew him, the locksmith handed him the keys to the house. Oh. So he copied off a key and when he came that evening, mm -hmm. he was holding the gun and I could see him holding the gun. Mm -hmm. And he then used the key and came into our bedroom. And uh, at one point, yes, I, he backed me into my closet mm -hmm. and I really wondered. What was gonna happen? Yeah. Wow. I no. wondered because that happens. We all know it, it happens all the time. Yes. You mm -hmm. read about it. I wasn't sure. I'd never thought that he would hurt me like that. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't didn't know, sure. Just didn't know. Wow. So yeah. I know you mentioned that um, when he was going through court and losing stuff and just the trials and the experience of life, and he wasn't really, he was crying out, but did you miss the signs of him crying out? Because if you're not used to it and you've accepted everything that's taken place mm -hmm. and adapted to it, what are some signs that our audience needs to be aware of so they can start paying attention? Well, there are, there are definite signs. When someone says, I can't go on, or I might as well die because I've lost my job, mm -hmm. or, I, or, or you see signs of a behavior change mm -hmm. and an emotional change in your friends or your colleagues mm -hmm. or your family members, if you see that, that they are losing interest mm -hmm. in things that they enjoyed, if they are very emotional all the time, mm -hmm. and you can just tell something's not right, mm -hmm. if they're gaining weight or losing weight, mm -hmm. if they are irritable, angry, mm -hmm. which I saw that, mm -hmm. that is a feel, that is, those are red flags, especially if you put all of those those yes. signs together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, if you if you talk to someone and they say the words, I might as well just die. That's it. Everybody would be better off without mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Those words cannot be taken lightly. Right. I didn't know that mm -hmm. at the time. He told me, you'll be better off without me. The girls will be better off without me. And I'm like, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I think a lot of times, people may not know if that person is serious and an example of that is um, in a past job that I had a co-worker he went through some challenges with um, the law and with jobs and changing jobs and um, a, re reduced in a reduction in his income and so he would you know he was just this funny guy just happy-go-lucky all the time just fun to be around great energy and he would say things like well if they demote me I'll just kill myself, you know, right. like, ha, 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 just like that, seriously. Right. So no one ever took him seriously. And he may have said that a few times, you know, just this fun guy. I mean, we would have so much fun at work. Right. And Thanksgiving, um, they went looking for him. No. And he had um, barricaded himself inside of his apartment so no one could come in, and he hung himself. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. And all we could think about is, 
how he would say these things, but it, it was hard for us to decipher mm -hmm. if he was serious, mm -hmm. if he was joking, and he was serious. Yes. All yeah. this time, he was very, very serious. So, right. you know, do you have any advice for the situation that I just, you know, shared with yes. you? Because we really didn't know what can we do to help prevent it? Mm -hmm. You know, are you playing? Are you serious? Right. Do we need to go ahead and get you some help even mm -hmm. if you aren't serious? You know, how can, what can we do? Well, when you're dealing with an adult, of course, an adult has uh, agency over themselves. And unless they're, they're a, a direct threat to themselves or to someone else, your, t your, your hands are That's tied. Right. Mm -hmm. However, you make a very, very valuable point, Nicole. Yeah. You, when someone says those words, you always take them seriously. You know, I, I, how many times will say, I'm just gonna kill myself, you know? Yes. I, okay, you can usually, I can't say it, I, you can usually tell. I don't mess around with that anymore. Right, yes. right. If yeah, somebody says that, That's right. I will say, wait, 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 wait. Um, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? And this segues into my message that I share all the time. We have to stop minding our own business. Mm -hmm. so in this country, we are conditioned to stay out of people's business. Either don't tell me how to raise my kids, don't tell me how when yeah. I need to mow my yeah. grass, yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't mess with right. my right. business. Right. Well, right. In, this, in, in these instances, because oftentimes when someone is depressed, yes, they don't know they're depressed. They don't. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. they're not depressed. Yes. Or they don't, or they're in denial if they're, if they have a if substance it, abuse mm -hmm. issue. The, we're our own worst, worst enemy, enemy because Absolutely. depression Absolutely. causes cognitive mm -hmm. distortion, thinking mm -hmm. errors. Thoughts. So you've got to remember but someone who is saying this or exhibiting uh, depressed behavior, mm -hmm. they're not thinking right. When they say, well, somebody killed themselves, they must be out of their mm -hmm. mind. Well, they kind of are. Yes. Because mm -hmm. they're not, this part of the brain is impaired. It's not they can't wow. make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So when, when, that, when, it, when, you're, when your audience, when they see this or they hear this, they can look at this as a balloon. Mm -hmm. Think about suicidal crisis as in a balloon. Mm -hmm. That air starts to fill that balloon and it gets tighter mm -hmm. and tighter and tighter. The Absolutely. whole idea is to release some of the pressure yeah. out of that balloon by asking the question, are you okay? Are you okay? And what can I do to help? What yes. can I do to help? Let me. Are you thinking of dying. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask the question yeah. because those thoughts are already there. You're mm -hmm. not going to plant the idea. Right. Mm -hmm. People are afraid to ask that question. They're afraid. And ask the question, are you thinking about going away or dying mm -hmm. or are you giving up? Mm -hmm. If they say, yeah, I thought about it, then you ask them, do you have a plan? Mm -hmm. And if they tell you, yes, I've planned the day, I, I know exactly how I'm going to do this, and then at that point you'll say, let's let's make an appointment with the doctor because see this is the deal depression is a treatable medical condition okay and so if they are sometimes wow. it just takes a friend to help them get so there yeah. this is a this is the this is another message that i need to give and this is the hardest one nine years after my husband took his life mm -hmm. i have four little girls mm -hmm. when he died they were 10 8 6 and barely five and when a parent takes his or her life, it opens a door that a child who may be suffering from depression mm -hmm. or other pressures that they may be experiencing at school, whatever the case may be, that door has been opened. Mm -hmm. okay. Nine years later, my baby, when she was 14 years old, also died of depression she took her life yes. okay. and i i think that's a lot of people will say depression runs in families they don't know if there's a genetic mm -hmm. component but i can tell you that there is a component when a parent does take their life mm -hmm. and it is a uh I, I i've asked a lot of people how can that be mm -hmm. you know where do they go in their head mm -hmm. and i've talked to survivors yeah. Yeah. who have attempted so and mm -hmm. survived and they said it has not personal, even though it feels very personal. Mm -hmm. When a person takes their life, at least 18 people are directly affected. Affected by it. You think wow. about the ripple effect Jeez. of that. 
think about the depression that also brings on for other people, yeah. which is what happened yeah, with me. Carry that load. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when my husband took his life, I went five years without any kind of treatment for my own depression because someone did me a terrible disservice and I believed them. They said depression is situational. For some people it is, but for most people it is not. Right. And when that stressful period of your life ch changes, then you'll come out of the depression. No, mm -hmm. because I grew up with a condition of a low-grade depression. Mm -hmm. I didn't know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. until I finally went to a doctor and mm -hmm. they told me what the deal was. I never wow. quite felt right. But when I had this catastrophe and this trauma occur, it completely depleted my reservoir of Absolutely. any kind of, in, of a neurotransmitter wow. in my brain. So for five years I suffered. I finally went to my, my therapist and said, I'm living life is a living hell mm -hmm. and she said, you don't have to yes, live like nightmare. this mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. go see a Be psychiatrist free. go Be see free. a doctor who's a specialist of the brain mm -hmm. not your internist and not your OBGYN absolutely go to the psychiatrist absolutely and that's what I tell that's what I want everybody to know is go find the right doctor you internists might say well, well I'm going to prescribe an antidepressant who knows mm -hmm. the doctor absolutely he's not a specialist he's not. she's not a specialist now let me ask you being a legal expert um can the courts really help in a situation like this? Yeah, and and that is one of the, I did not go to law school until I was 47 years old. Oh, really? Okay. So that, everybody, okay. hey. That's anybody, a success story that in itself. Sure is. It is. That is. And I had two weeks of law school when my daughter took her life. Mm. So I withdrew from law school and in the May, May the following, the following mm. May um, y the year, I, I got a call from the law school and they said, you are you going to come back? Mm. And I said, uh, I don't know if I can do it. And I went to my therapist and she said, you know, Terry, and this always makes me cry. She said, uh, you know, I'm not in the business of telling people, it, my clients and my patients mm -hmm. what to do. I let them figure that out. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to go to law school mm -hmm. and you're going to take it one semester at a time. And when you get through with those three years of law school, you will know that you can do anything yes. in this because Absolutely. you made it through considering the amount of grief wow. that you experienced. Yes. And she is right. Mm -hmm. When I got my license, the first thing I did was I made a decision not, I wanted to practice criminal law and I knew that, but I decided I didn't want to be a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a defense attorney because I wanted to help people who are experiencing either substance abuse, mental health issues, and that is why they're in, in the criminal uh, arena. Mm -hmm. That's why they're offending. That's why they keep breaking the law. There may be a mitigating reason why this is going on because I was married to a wonderful man, but he was sick. And if he we could have gotten wow. if he could have gotten the help that he needed, yes. it might have changed, changed the outcome. everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at these clients, and they if I can get them the help, yes. if I can get them into specialty yes. courts, mm -hmm. which I can get them in the mental health yes. section, yes. if I can convince the judges and the prosecutors, mm -hmm. then then they don't reoffend because yes. then mm -hmm. we're dealing with the underlying issue. Right, right. right. Well, let me yeah. ask you before we wrap it up. Can you kind of elaborate on the three-leg stool and kind of share sure. with our audience what that is? Yes, uh, uh, studies have shown that with depression and, mental, and certain uh, mental health issues, that recovery is like a three-legged stool. The one of the and you need all three because you mm -hmm. can think about it. It's, it's not going to fall over. over. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. For for most people, it's medication, and mm -hmm. uh, but also along with that is cognitive therapy because again you have thinking errors when you have depression so you need the therapist you need to work through a lot of the thinking errors with a, pro a, a professional okay then the third is uh, peer support mm -hmm. very important to be among people who understand what you're going through maybe they've been through it and they are in a recovery position and they can support you so it's medication it's uh, cognitive therapy and it's peer support. Mm -hmm. And I also really want to emphasize that people need to stop minding their own business. Yes. It's mm. okay to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And I ha and I know we're about out of time, but I 
myself experienced that. I walked into an office and there was a lady sitting in there and she was crying all by herself and she was the only one in there. My instinct was to back out and give her her privacy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, that's contrary to everything I always say. So I stepped back in and I said, are you okay? And she said, yeah. And I said, do you want to talk about it? And she said, no, I don't want to talk about it. And I went, okay. Yeah. And then I backed out, but I did what I needed to do. You did. Because a friend of mine jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge when he was 19 years old, lived to survive, lived to, obviously wow. one of 43 people to ever survive jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. But he said that day, he made a pact with himself. He wouldn't jump if one person said, are you okay? Oh, really? Wow. Not one person that day asked him if he was okay. Really? So that question wow. can save a life. Yes. Jeez. Great. And you know, we're so glad you came yes. uh, to be with us and basically to come out of the shadows of suicide to yes. success. Strong we thank woman. you for you are that. Very strong woman. It's just amazing. Glad to be here Thank anytime. You. I'd love to come back. Definitely. Okay. So okay. tell our audience how they can find you and hear more about your story and your life's journey. Uh, and oh. um, look out there at the audience because okay. they want to know. Okay. Terry Bentley Hill. Okay. Um, I'm easy to find. I am a criminal defense attorney, and you can also look under Stop Minding Your Own Business because that's kind of a secondary thing that <coughs> I'm doing. I speak all the time. I don't have a book yet. Maybe a book is coming, but at any rate, you can always find me on the internet. I'm terrybentleyhill.com. She's okay. to be found. Yes, okay. yes. Well, Terry, we appreciate you so much yes, again for Thank sharing you. your story. And to our audience, again, you can always find us on letstalkan.com, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and at Let's Talk AN. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Nicole King, health coach, fitness trainer, and owner of Nick Fit ROI. And not only do I strive to help people be physically fit, I am interested in all of my clients' well-being, including their skin, their hair, mental clarity, weight loss, physical goals, whatever it is, I'm here to help them. And today I'd like to share with you the benefits of apple cider vinegar tea. All right, so let me kind of explain what we have here. Apple cider vinegar, Bragg's brand, unfiltered, Okay, so that's ingredient number one. Any water of your choice. You could use lemon juice or lime juice. So I just grabbed this out of my refrigerator. Same benefits, just different taste. Ground cinnamon. Ground ginger. And cayenne pepper. Okay, so we're going to start with adding the water. So get you a shaker or whatever you have at home of your convenience. You're going to pour about eight ounces. Okay. All right, just a little bit more. Then you're going to put in two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Just like this. Dash. Dash. Okay. Lemon juice, open that up, one teaspoon, okay, got that going. Now we have cinnamon, ground cinnamon has so many benefits, you can do about half a teaspoon because it gets pretty strong, so I typically use that, I've tried more and it's just really cinnamon cinnamony, so half a teaspoon would be enough. Okay, ground cinnamon, I'm sorry, ground ginger. This is ground ginger, okay? So you're gonna do about just a, a tad, maybe the tip of the teaspoon or half, okay? Put that here. Last but not least is your cayenne pepper. Okay, so I don't measure this on a teaspoon at all. I just do a couple of sprinkles, so that gets pretty strong. So you could stir this, but I'm going to shake it because it blends better. So this is a shaker that I just picked up at Sprouts. You can get it at any um, grocery store, Walmart, whatever it is to your convenience. Make sure you have the top on there pretty good so it doesn't spill everywhere. Shake, 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 shake. The benefit of this, it is going to help you lose weight. Okay, so typically I use this at night before I go to bed. 
you don't have to heat this up you can make this as a tea or you just drink this normally at room temperature okay I prefer to put this in my um, coffee cup at night right here put this in the, in the microwave 30 seconds and sip away it's gonna help you feel full it's gonna help you lose weight drink this at least three to four nights per week and you'll see all the full benefits all right guys welcome back to let's talk with Angelia and Nicole we just finished our segment with Terry and now we're going into our relationship series with DJ <laughs> DJ's in the house what's going on ladies what's hey, how are you? listen I got something real quick real quick okay real quick now let me ask you this <clears throat> who pays for the date the brother ah. <laughs> most of the time so let me ask you this. Okay, think about this, Cole. So you met this guy. You've gone on <laughs> six, seven dates. Mm -hmm. When do you say, <clears throat> and not only have you met him, yes. Angela, you like it. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. You like it. That's important. That's you point. into this dude. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. You into this dude. So, And I know dating, in the dating mm -hmm. world, the dating scene, sometimes we just take dates. Yeah. Right. We may not like this person. <laughs> this dude may not be all that. Or this chick may not be right, all that. Right, right. But you like this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. You like this one. You into this one. Right. You, you don't see nothing. You no, know what no, I mean? No. You know all that stuff. You know mm -hmm. all that stuff we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Is he a player? Uh -huh, Is he this? Uh -huh. Does he think he's slick? Uh -huh, uh -huh. All that stuff y'all thinking about. Right. And we thinking about the same thing. Yeah, right. yeah. But yeah. Um, you into him now. What happens on the seventh date? Or the eighth <clears> date? Or I would, for me, so, I would pay. Yeah, I, it wouldn't even take seven or eight days. It would probably right. be the third or fourth I would offer to re at least return the favor mm -hmm. to him. Hey, let me take you out for lunch or dinner. What's the favorite place? You know, I probably would just make arrangements and I'd pay for the tab before he even realized Is that the it. approach? So let me ask y'all this. Is that the approach though? Is the approach, what's your favorite place or what's your favorite food? Mm -hmm. or... I was surprised him because I would, if we have gone out on seven, eight dates, I would mm -hmm. have asked him enough questions throughout the process to really learn who he is and what he likes. To mm -hmm. kind of target so, that. Yeah, so I would have already set it up and I'd be like, I'm going to surprise him today. I'm going to take him somewhere I know he's going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to throw that card down, pay for that bill, mm -hmm. that cash, mm -hmm. and we're going to go on and call it a night. Okay, so Cole, so the chick that doesn't do that, your friend, that doesn't mm. do that because we all got one. Yes, we do. We all got a you we know, all got a partner who don't do that. Some people, I think, are conditioned to, you know what? The guy's always supposed to pay. Um, I'm just not that way. But there are ladies that are like, you know, if he's not paying, I'm not doing this. I, I just don't agree with that. I just think, you know what? It's great to to treat your man. You know, that's just me personally. I'm with you. It's not always about you it's not always about the woman make him feel special so i think that that person is a little bit selfish and and just thinking of themselves so I, you know i don't know i don't know what to say about that i can't so and let me ask I, you I this. can't so do you think that that kind of personality or that kind of image leads to other things and you know what i mean by that so the dude is paying for everything is he he's is expecting he, something yeah is he supposed to be expecting something yeah. you know what i think you really gotta kind of know the guy you're dealing with and then you gotta know who you are too because okay. sometimes okay the man may be expecting something because we presented something to him that we know in the beginning we were just trying to get that date so let me kind of say i'm gonna do a b c d leading mm -hmm. to sexual connotations however not really want to go there so so let me ask you Sometimes this. women can't pay for the date because they just simply broke. Absolutely not. I got it. Ain't no food expecting. You ain't getting no sex from some food. Okay. I, I, I'm so shouldn't. sorry. Is that. Is that y'all know. And you can't pay just, no bills to get money either. I'm going to have know what the deal is. Is that the trade off? We got. We all got That's a homegirl. Yeah, we got a homegirl. We got a homegirl. Y'all know right. what it is. He paid for my nails and my uh -huh. hair. Girl, uh -huh. keep that. <laughs> yeah, nothing to break up. They be like, they be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. What is that? <laughs> Look, player, keep that. Keep that. Because you can go on the Wednesdays, Women Day, get it cheaper. Uh -huh. But you know, so many women do say that. Well, he paid my nails, he paid my uh, light bill, my phone bill. Well, okay, I have a job, I'll pay my own bills. No, we maybe recognize. that's their expectations. That's maybe right. that's their expectations. We recognize that that's the time we're living. Oh, it's out there, yes. yeah. Especially right. the younger generation, yeah. you know, and that's why older women, we really have to mentor them and tell them if you start selling your body early, that's what you're going to do the rest of your life. I mean, yes. Even, but even for the fellas, even for the fellas, I think, you know, some of these cats, uh, especially these young cats, mm -hmm. that's just, a, that's just that is a, a portrayed. Cat. 
image. Right. 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 You know what I mean? Right. Right. You just gotta. You gotta be slicker than that. Right. You can say slicker. Right. Yeah. You gotta be slicker. Wait. 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 Did you catch that keyword? Yes. Yeah. Slicker than that. You gotta be slicker than that. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be slicker than that. But yeah. 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 So, so guys than that. really think that these single guys and they're dating. Okay, if I take her out on a couple of dates, you know, I'm expecting this something later. Some of them are thinking they that. They are. Yeah, some cats are thinking oh that. My but let me ask you this though. How does a dude know if she's just in it for the meal or just in it for the experience mm -hmm. or just in it for, you know, the quick movie or in it for whatever? Right, right. You know what I mean? And you know, that's key with online dating because online dating, um, I think... You know, I've, I've disclosed sometimes I've done that. And mm -hmm. women do say they do that just to have someone to go out with. Mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. do it just to get meals. And so some of the feedback and the pushback guys give yeah. is that I spend more money taking women out to eat than I do finding a real woman who wants a date. Hmm. Mm. And that's pretty sad. But let me ask I you this, though. I think that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but, but let me ask you this, though. If you're in the dating scene, if you're dating, that's part of it, right? Yeah, spending that, money, yeah. It's mm -hmm. part of it. That's why you take one at a time till you don't spend all your money. <laughs> so... So if she's really broke, will you still feed her? You um, I don't, yeah, I'm a I'm an old school dude. I ain't really getting into twelve dollar plates and fourteen dollar Papa those visits. Yeah, yes. I mean if if, yes, if yes. I say we I going, love that. yeah, if, if I say if I say come on, baby, let's go out on a date. You got her. Yeah, I got you. And what I what I what I think sometimes is is that the date is misinterpreted. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just a date. Yeah, yeah. the date. Yeah, we Nothing. getting married. Thank you. Yeah, oh we my just. God. So if I see you out with somebody else, it should be okay, okay. huh? Because it's just a date, yeah, right? For me. So the woman should understand that just because he took me out, we're just hanging out, having yeah. a good time. I'm not. But some people exclusively start, dating. Look, they even start putting claims and names just because we went out. We a couple. No, that's not. We just went yeah. out to eat. So let me ask you this: When is it safe? When is it safe? And I'm I'm talking about from a female's perspective, from a woman's perspective. When is it safe to cook for a dude? Oh, I think you can do that immediately. <coughs> I think if you want to offer, hey, I'm cooking today. I'm cooking a nice meal for you. Especially if you're so comfortable you know, with him. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's say that. If you're comfortable, yeah. you know, okay. with them, and them being in your home. Right. When that comfort level is there, I think it's okay to invite them over for lunch or dinner. Yeah, but it wouldn't be the seventh date you won't be coming over yeah. to home. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You yeah. and, you know, I need to know a little bit more about you. To make so, sure. So, yeah, if I don't know you, definitely not on the first date unless I've known you. Right, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's cool. Absolutely. I like it. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy these days. So. But, you know, okay, so when they cook for you, you know, they're trying to be that wifey material. What about when they can't cook? You, let and me you ask show you this, up, though. But you show up and does, the food ain't even good. But, but this cooking, <laughs> think about this. Think about this. This cooking actually put you in the wife category. No. For some people, they feel like that's what it is because they're trying to say, okay, well, the, the problem is most men want to know, can you cook? Because women always say, well, let's go out to eat. So I'm going to tell you something. A lot of men today, they're not asking that question like they did before. A lot of men are cooking and a lot of people are eating out. I mean, that's really the truth. It's not, now it's not about what well, she can't cook. I'm not, no, they'll kind of help you cook a little bit, groom you, or the man can cook. A lot mm -hmm. of men can cook and their wives Mostly. never cook. Because that, that, that man can cook better than the wife. That would be me? <laughs> yes. That would be me? Yeah. yeah. So me. I don't think Babe, that... I'm sorry to me to catch you out there like that. <laughs> I did, yeah. 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 That's so it's not... Say. Yeah, I cook. You know, my husband isn't like, what, well, have you cooked it? I mean, he's just easy. We, easy we'll going. Eat. That's if exactly I, right. That's what it. about... I'm so, forward. okay, so you're saying, basically, for you, if the woman can't cook and she tried, you're going to sell good effort. Um, yeah. And listen to this. But, but think about this. It's all about approach, remember? Mm -hmm. Especially the if you like... Yeah, someone. So yeah. when, when my wife is cooking for us, yeah. I'm saying, babe, you should have done this. Babe, what you think about this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying, oh my God, yes. this is horrible. You're not knocking it down. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. never do that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I would say, hey, babe, you probably should have added a little onion to this. Yeah. What, what you yeah. think about that? Yeah. That kind right. of thing. Okay. okay. I think it's all, those kinds of things are okay. all about approach. Right. I never forget when approach. I was married, y'all, I tried to make some chili. It was cold. <laughs> Disaster. Cold chili. It, no, it was cold outside, so cold. I tried to make some chili. Well, it was cold, too. Huh? Right. But this is the problem. When I got finished, my husband at the time looked at the kids and said, what your mama serving as dog food? <laughs> oh, hey. See? You no. didn't cook any more, did yeah. Not. Again, a bro. <laughs> well, this is real. I don't mess up, though. Girl, yeah, it was bad. It was, it it was, was horrible. horrible. <laughs> it was horrible, rememberable. Oh, but you God. know, I tried, and we laughed about that somewhat. Cause so, I guys, think about this. So, if we're, if we're dating and we're going out, uh, and we do that frequently, and we mm -hmm. go out mm -hmm. frequently, mm -hmm. um, are you watching, are you ladies, mm -hmm. ladies, mm -hmm. are you watching how he tips? Yes. 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 It shows me what we're going to deal with yes. the relationship because yes. if he's tipping them poorly, 
he's gonna treat me poorly. You mm. think? I think so. So because so you he, think those two things are correlated? I think so because it's still signs and patterns of how he is and how he operates. And so you can tell by the tip if he's gonna buy you decent gifts, if he's gonna take time to invest in you and spend time with you and you know treat you and not just say okay, well she ain't worth it. Because of, I don't know. To, that's the reason I'm But look, service is key. Now, I, I and when people service. give you good service, you give them good tips. And that's true. That's right. true. Right. Yeah, Great that's service is rewarded. Yeah, Great that's service is rewarded. But then there are people that are just generous tippers and people that have been servers before and they mm -hmm. know what these people go through so they exactly just want right. to go ahead and tip them that's right so you know and that's fine you know that's your opinion with that i would look at more how he treats you know his mother um that too. if he had a daughter that i would look at to see okay maybe he'll treat me this way or he's a good guy because i see the things he does for his mother i see the things he does for his daughter but tipping I just think that's a courtesy, and I think it's what's needed and necessary for these people that are serving us. Well, see, I don't think it's a tip because black people are already stereotyped for not tipping. But this is oh, thing, terrible. Yeah, stereotype. but this is yeah. thing. See, for me, when it comes to tipping, because if you can't give so you want you expect great quality service when you go out to a restaurant, I do. right? And you want them to be on time, come back, come back, yes. and that another, and then they got ten other customers, but you want that undivided right. attention. If you can't tip them right, then to me, you're showing behaviors. Mm that are going to eventually come out in a relationship to where you're not going to value me as much. I'm not so, saying mm -hmm. I'm not saying the relationship is based on tipping mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the mother fact that is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. you think that's a cap, but you think tipping is a I character trait? I think it is because it shows deep down inside how you value people, how you look at situations. That's just my mm -hmm. opinion. So do you think that carries over for a woman when she's out and she's being served and she tips? Does that tell a lot about her character as well or no? To a certain extent because mm -hmm. it means she's selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you not give this person some money and say, I need that for something else when they've done everything you asked mm -hmm. them for and mm -hmm. more because they're serving you. Mm -hmm. So you sound and like a great tipper. I am. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a part of us. <laughs> Me too. Um, I, I believe that yeah. when, you're, when you're dining out, when you're out, and not just necessarily dining. Services. Do we tip the valet? Do yes. we tip our barbers? Yes. Do we, you know, do we tip our, right. our, our stylists? Right. Do we mm -hmm. tip right. those people? I didn't say do we com do we compensate right. them. Right. Yeah, because we all compensate. Yeah, absolutely. Them. But do we tip them? Mm -hmm. Do we say, I appreciate this service right. on top of your standard compensation? So right. let, let me ask you this question. Say you had a, a meal for a hundred dollars <laughs> and then you, you're taking your wife out and the meal, the total is a hundred. How much are you going to tip your server? Minus at least $20. 20. At least, at least 20. 20. Yeah. 20 is minimum. Mm -hmm. And if they did, did something super outstanding, I'm going to give them more. Yeah. Okay. Because I want that same level of service every time. I don't want it to be a one-time experience or hit and miss. Okay. And then, you know, with us as people, so many times we just don't do it. And what? They don't, and some people don't know, even when it comes to, let's say a manicure, let's say a $45 manicure, how much mm -hmm. are you going to tip? I'm normally, it depends on how many people I had because everybody's just going to get $3 to $5. Okay. Okay. So that's a little different than dining out, I guess, tipping your yeah, nails. Because I'm doing multiple services. But okay. when I leave there, they're going to get paid. They're going to be good. And then, okay. you know, it depends on how much time they spend on you and how many people. Because you got one here, one there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I leave paying pretty good. But everybody normally gets about 20%. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know. Yeah. I'm so let me ask y'all this. Why do you think in our communities, in our communities, especially in the African-American community, mm -hmm. why do you think we struggle so much with tipping? And why is that stereotype so big in our community? I think a lot because a lot of them have never um, worked in that environment, so they really don't know. And a lot of, you know, it's a lot of selfishness, as you said Selfish. earlier, mm -hmm. it's about me. I'm only going to give them $5. I'm only going to give them 2 or $3 so I can keep the rest for myself. And they really don't understand, you know, that's really serving. You, you're you really giving back to someone that is serving you. Right. So they just don't right. understand the whole dynamic of it. I, I really think that's and what that's it is. And that's their livelihood, too. Yeah, they don't know. They don't. Mm -hmm. They really don't know. They probably think, you know, they're making an hourly wage, wage which most of them have a very low hourly $2 wage. $2.20. Is yeah. that what it is for Yeah, some? it's like $2.20. I don't think something. I knew that. See, yeah, yeah, it's know. always been low. They, I just think they don't know. And then if they saw how their parents tipped... Mm -hmm. That's part of patterns. it as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Patterns. So I, I just think that they just don't know much about. So think about this. Tipping. Why do we get so offended? Like when the when the tip rate is listed. I know. Because they're trying to help you pay. People like, I know. People, people get so mad. People like, people get mad about that. But that's because, because they don't want. They cheap anyway. And then and we're talking a party. Now this is a party of twenty people. Mm -hmm. So after and so many people, people, then it's. It's no, more than eight people. More than eight people, people somewhere. They're yeah. going to already include that they in. Need to. And they get so mad. They've already included this in here. So I, 
It's not a big deal. But I just think <laughs> when they do that, they're know. like, I won't get them no, that much. They won't I don't think they, they I really think, I really think mm-hmm. they yes. don't know that. I'm, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I just because don't think I, they know. So think about this. Even if the bill is expensive, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even if the bill supersedes and you got a party of 20 and, you, and you're and you paying the bill. Right. Mm-hmm. A party of 20 anywhere at Chili's is yes. $250. Yes. Easy. They Easy. That's just, 20%. Yeah, yeah. They still get the 20%. Yeah. Yes. And most of the time, they've already given it. If I see that even when they divide it among the people, yes. it's not 20%, I'm still going to give more. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people don't look at the fact they took time to not have as many tables. Yes. They could have made more money they serving multiple tables. That's right. a good point. So now you're looking at the fact, well, they already got it, but that's still not enough for what they gave us. Yes. Do we, and I'm going to give we, more. Think about this. Do we as a culture, do we as a people, do we give service a hard time? Yeah. Because you're like, hurry up, need some drink. Knowing she done, she got 20 of y'all. Yeah. You done drunk all your spot. I've, I've never been that No, he's, he said we as I'm a people. Like yeah. No, we it. as a people. But probably as a people. Oh, I've been around people in my group that we go out and do that, and they do that. And I I'm have like, friends you know, in my group. Right. Yes. I'm like, yeah, I got friends in my group who annoy me mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. we go out to eat. Yeah. I actually go into place saying, don't do that today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, don't send your food back. Oh, yeah. You do all that stuff. Yes. I'm not trying to hear all yes. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some people don't know. I'm going to give an example. Um, some years back, I had a, a birthday dinner mm-hmm. at um, and the Omni. Is that Bob's? This Bob's Steakhouse. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, love that place. Okay. So I had, you know, my friends from the area come and some from the country. Uh-huh. You know, come. Uh-huh. So, you know, you know Miss Ray, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from here, they were fine. Right. But my ones from the country just freaked out. <laughs> like, They're what? like, what is this? You know what? I'm just gonna eat a Whataburger God. when this is over. Is what they said. And then you know the bread. Mm-hmm. I, I know y'all been there. So uh-huh. certain places they're not gonna have that golden corral <laughs> soft bread. It's the crispy bread. Oh, you, know? you gotta cut it. You gotta cut you it, it and then it's, and then it's soft in the middle. And they were just complaining, ripping this up. So it's a culture thing. Some people just don't know. <laughs> oh like the just, Whataburger. Well, I'm telling you I about. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm just stuff. like, but that's. I was, I was I like, love okay. It. So I learned a lot that night. You know, you can't take everybody <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. They're not ready for part of that journey. They're not ready for that journey. Yeah, you can't tell everybody well, everywhere. This is not part of your journey. No, no. You're not gonna be able to make I'm trying trip. to show you something <laughs> different. I'm trying to, you know, broaden your horizons. Yeah, you just keep going. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Okay. so. All right, guys. You know what? So we've had a great time talking about relationships. That we have. Yes. So let me leave you with this thought here, because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes just throw your head back and be like, Lord, what's next? Uh huh. What if the woman says she's going to take you out on a date, and y'all done order for all this stuff, and then she ain't got no money? Um, she said, I forgot my wallet at home. Me? I'm going to be prepared. Yeah, I'm already prepared. Yeah. Already prepared. Yeah. But what and do you think about the-, the average guys? How would they handle they, that? Would they my be partners? like, yeah, would they be like, she's prepared? They're going to be prepared. <laughs> oh, they in the bathroom. <laughs> In the bathroom, blowing my phone up right now. Man, do you believe this? I'm getting all that. I'm getting all that. I'm actually. Especially if they ain't got the money themselves to pay for it. And here's the part. Here's what's sad. They probably got the bread. Yes. It's for them. It's all about the principle. It's like, are you serious? Yeah, man. They yeah. I'm talking them down. Yeah. I'm actually talking about that picture, man. Go on and have your. What about when the man does it? He said, "Oh, you know, because I have a friend that went out on a date." So the guy, when she got there, he was sitting at the bar. Mm-hmm. And he said, go ahead and order your drink. She said, no, I'll wait till we sit at the table. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she sits at the table. And she orders the drink at the bar. He cashes out at the bar. They get down to the table. And he the bill comes and said, I'm going to the bathroom. True story. He come back and said, you take care of that? She said, you invited me. OK, no problem. I got it. So some of these men are just ruthless. No, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. That may have been a conversation from the beginning. You know, some he people assume. You to dinner. Yeah. No, I agree with you're that. You're a man. There's some no conversation. Wait a minute. He gonna, he gonna pay for he the He came drink. back from the restroom. Yes, and said, you got and that? And said, did you handle it? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. No. Truth. Right. I would have had a problem right, with that. Wait, did I have another <laughs> friend, y'all? Oh, and poor rapper, had another friend went out on a date. See, these these online dates, I can tell y'all about the uh-huh, uh-huh. I have another friend went on a date. <laughs> and the guy said, go ahead and order what you want. I'm not getting nothing. So the girl orders. He said, we're just going to share what you got. <laughs> I was the guy. Because he only had enough. He didn't want to have to buy another You know, meal. I had to give he him sh- a little bit of credit. No, ma'am. I, I, no, he that's better than going to the bathroom? No, he shouldn't have took me there. I'm, I'm like, he shared I, that meal. I agree with Angel. Yeah, Listen. he should have taken me there. He should have never went there. He should have no. never gone. He was don't, trying don't to impress. Take. You can't hey, do you it. get what you want. I see. She was like, I was hungry. I wanted my own food. Why didn't you just go to Chili? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two for twenty. Yeah. You should have got two, two for yeah. twenty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, be really. It's not that big of a deal. You're right, you're right. Be it's realistic. That with it. That's funny. It's not because yeah, think about this. Even, even when you first meet a woman, mm-hmm. your your introduction could be, "Hey, lady, you you want to go to dinner? Yeah. Yes. Listen, how about this? 
Let's start here. Let's do this. Right. Let's meet here. Right. It, it works. Right. You can right. take me to McDonald's. It works. You can take me to get some ice cream yeah. on the first date. Yeah. Just because I want to know you. I don't want the meal. I can buy my own meal. Yes. Yeah. Take me somewhere so yeah. I can learn who you are. It works. Because that meal means nothing to me. And more importantly, it also see. It also lets both of you see exactly what you're working what's with. Important. Absolutely. Exactly what's involved. Are you really? If you get if you get where I'm coming from. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now let yes. me ask you this. Now this, don't get mad, don't start screaming. Let's see, you want the right hand, left yeah. hand? Like we come over. Because y'all know I'm going to give you one. Let me ask you Do you go Dutch on the first day? I That's can. a conversation. You know what? I can. Because for me, and I've done that, and mm -hmm. I tell people either A, I will pay, or I will go Dutch. Because I don't want you A, expecting anything from me, and B, I want you to see it's not about the money, it's not about where we go. Mm hmm. And so I'm okay with but that. But who brings that up nowadays? Does anybody bring that up? Who like, okay, we just, we, hey, let's go out on a date. Are, are we going Dutch? Are you paying? Are paying? Nobody say, who says Who's that? The, I, online. I was just about to say <laughs> Hey, go back that? to online I swear I was just about to say oh, yeah. These online what dating people. Simple, because I had that happen to Simon. me. Ooh, I, I, drove from, I drove from the South, all the way to South Lake, to meet a guy for lunch that he requested. We get there. He goes to one line. I'm over here like, wait, what happened? He's paying for him. He didn't even tell me. I was kind of shocked. <laughs> no. I said, I could have ate on my own back no. at home. Oh, I'm not no. lying. True story. Promise to God. Are Online dating. Horrible experiences. Oh, wow. Well. But know, it happens I don't, days and times. See, my deal is I just don't, I don't get the, I don't get the, um, you initiate the date. Yes. You, <laughs> yes. And most guys, I, you know me, I'm kind of old school. Yes. Most guys are supposed to say, hey, lady. That, I got you. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. It's this, expected. This, 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 this. It is an expectation. Man, what are you doing? Yeah. What are yes. you talking about? Yes. Yes. Don't invite, especially on the first day. If don't invite, invite me, if, don't if invite you're not me. paying, yeah. Don't so me. I would have. Yeah, did you, did you, you see him again? No. Because yeah, so. you walked up. I couldn't get out of that line quick enough, eat that food quick enough. Uh -uh. But you know what? That's another story. So how about this, guys? We've had great conversations. We have. Yes, we have. We have more to have. talk about, and um, we're gonna come back and talk about some Let's more. Let's do it. This has been Let's Talk with Angela Nicole. This is Angelia. Today's segment on the financial piece will be talking about the legal parts. We know everything is big in Dallas. Your legal expenses is really, really big. Anytime you deal with funeral expenses, they're really big as well. And some things we want to talk about is legal aid. If you don't have an attorney and you don't really know how to start on your legal process, meaning someone's in jail that you're in love with, or someone commits suicide, you really want to know what steps do I need to take next. And do I really want to count on using the court appointed attorney? Or do I want someone I really feel comfortable in protecting me? Get you some legal services. They have what's called a legal shield. It's a monthly membership. Some people say it may not work. You know what? It's better than having nothing. At least for a small fee monthly, you can find out what your rights are and what your next steps are. And then make rational decisions. If someone kills themselves or someone is getting ill and, you know, we don't have prepaid burial plans, we need to start making sure that our life insurance policy is just as critical as our everyday expenses because that's a burden you don't want to put on someone else. So check into getting a prepaid burial policy, something you can pay for monthly because you know what? The expenses are big, Dallas is big, but we know your heart is big and we want you to be successful in your journey on this financial deficit. This has been Angelia with Let's Talk with Angelia and Nicole. Open floor plan, beautiful, great location. This is just what you wanted, girl. Isn't that what you want too? Mm, yeah, but I don't have the best credit score. Well, honey, neither did I. True. Uh, but I was still able to buy the house of my dreams. Thank so, you. No, I'm picky. You are you to build like I did. I got just the person you need to talk no, to. No, call my realtor. She gives referrals. Uh, so does mine. <laughs> really? Yes, really. Tired of renting? Wanting to build? Looking for the right location? Credit problems? Call Angelia Dunbar Realty.